like let the water run and do its thing, you know, and see what goes. And from there, what, what can you do? So I have the paper, the brushes. I have my ink today, we're gonna have the coffee. And after that, you can see on, on my work, I do a lot of uh, texture background. I'll show you what the, like this guy. I'm gonna do, try to do this, sim a similar thing to this guy. See? So how you create that? It's a fun thing. Spray bottle. You gotta you know. So I put a coffee here inside of the spray bottle. And also have a dripping, like, you know. And this, you don't have, yeah, I don't, I didn't buy it. This is, I had the sprays, I just cleaned up afterwards and I cap it because I know one day I'm gonna use for my artwork. Okay, so, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna make the background, okay? So I'm gonna get my spray and, oops, it's already open. I'm gonna spray the paper. Awesome. So Sibeli is working with three different tools for mark, ma mark making, a dropper or a pipette, a spray bottle to create textured backgrounds, and also a brush of any kind, whatever works for you at home. Yes. That okay. background looks great and very even. Okay. So if you are in a rush, you can get a hair dryer. Okay. Right now here, because when I'm not, I already made one beforehand. Beautiful. Dry, but it's the same thing. I just spray the paper, okay? So I have, and that's what I like too, because now, I know I don't, because I have, I have to do the background before I do the, the, so, the right, some people do the background afterwards. I like to do my background first because I don't you know, so I, I can see where the things are gonna be, so where I'm gonna draw. So now I'm gonna do my drawing on top of this background, you know? So I'm gonna put a make a tardigrade. So tardigrade, you no, know, I look around again just to have you know, and you now trying to get inspiration. This tardigrade, I'm gonna make another one here. So it has basically it's a head like just one, two, three, four, five. But well, no, so I'm gonna make a tardigrade here one and try to very, very mild, not do very thick lines because you no, know, I need to hide there with the painting afterwards. Okay. And the feet is here, and there's the feet is behind. Simple. We're done. The drawing is done. <laughs> very, very. It's just it's just a mark in the paper where things are gonna be. Okay. So there's nothing more. Is not a, a final. Is it? No. It's your painting. You're not drawing. So. It's such a good reminder too that the foundation of all arts practices, whatever the medium, is just observing basic shapes, whether it's in a microorganism like a tardigrade or something as big as an elephant. Yes, it's always about shapes. So I'm gonna get uh, water, now basically clear water, and I'm gonna just water that drawing just around the drawing. So that's a fun thing because now after that I'm gonna put the coffee when the wet paper, it's called the wet on wet. Now, no, on um, watercolor is wet on dry. I love to work more than ever in wet on wet because so the, the, when I put the pigment, in this case, the coffee, no, it's gonna, it's gonna travel in the water. So basically I wet the, no, on top of the, my little balls that I made. Now I'm gonna get a, a, another brush, thinner one, and I'm gonna just circle and see, now we're gonna to start to see the water traveling. Can you see it? Yeah, absolutely. It's really moving very naturally with just the gravity of the stroke. Mm -hmm. It's pretty effortless, it seems like, but maybe it's just because you're a professional. It's practice. I don't call me professional, it's just, you know, you know what I call it is practicing, seeing what happens. The more you do, more you know how it's gonna behave the water in the wet paper, you know. What was the first time that you used watercolor independently in your own arts practice? Uh, it was two years ago. I started the watercolor actually with you guys at the Creative Center. I took some classes, people were interested in the hospital. So I started to be interested. And when Sam started to paint, draw the tragic grades, I thought I'd like to paint them, you know. So that's two years, two years ago. So I've been, but I've been really painting a lot, you know, so it's like,
but I'm no, it's like I don't have a formal education painting, but I think part is you see. Now we have our guys. So if I want, like, for example, I want to contour better some parts, but, but it's too wet, you know, it's not going to show me. So you wait to dry or you get the dryer and the dryer paper. But be careful here because I already, I use a lot, no, my, 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 my collar went a little way what I didn't want. So what I can try to do to fix, I can get a dry paper and go over there before marks the paper. I can bring, try to bring back the color, no, the pigment into the, into the, the area that I'm painting. So I think the, the thing is, don't be afraid. Okay. Just now it's like, uh, no, it's like learning a language, another language. You have to go for it, make mistakes, learn from your mistakes. Learn how to fix it. Just, no, don't be afraid. I've heard too that watercolor is a medium where happy accidents are something that drive a lot of people's work. Can you tell me a little bit more about how you came to using monochromatic color palettes in watercolor and was that a happy accident at first? No, actually it was really decided because I think it comes from my idea of making monochromatic artwork that I've been doing, I have now. Uh, and when I started to practice, I was doing very colorful things, but I'm never, I've never been interested in a lot of color in my artwork. I've always been interested in see what one thing can do and try just to understand the medium that I'm working on. And one, you take uh, all the, you like you have, we start to take the elements off and keep, well, you start to work for one thing. I mean, all is about trying to see what the water is doing, you know? So if you work with too many colors, I think it become about the color and not about what the, the, the water process. So for me, it was a lot of fun just to see, you know, what, what the water is doing. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so it's about allowing the medium to guide you and, and creating contrast in the subject as opposed to making things really bright and colorful. Yeah, That's an interesting approach. And it's, uh, uh, watercolor is all about layering, you know. So, so wait, things dry or dry off your uh, hair dryer, and now uh, and let things you know travel around a little and see what happens. So while this guy, I'm gonna wait him to dry a little. I'm gonna get this guy here. And I'm gonna make more things around. Triplets. So this is my universe. So the tardigrade is traveling the universe. You're so free with that dropper tool. It's really exciting to watch. Yeah, I think now, uh, of course, it took me a while to, to get comfortable, but also it's fun for me. It has to, part of the process has to be fun, you know? So when everything dries, you can do the details. You can get a smaller brush, like a, no, a zero, 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 let's say this one is a zero. And you can draw a little details if you, if you, if you like that. You know? But I recommend wait, wait for things to dry to see if you want to put more layers on top because in general watercolor, when dries, the color fades a little, you know? So it's more subtle. So I did that before I was, you no, know, just before we got in online, just to see, you know. Wow. So these I did just like a few, you know, just before we got in online. So we can even keep working, let this guy dry. That's such amazing pigment to be made just with a household item, just with coffee. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? It looks really good. I love that. So I'm going to just very clear a little more things here trying to make the nails, no, little feet disappear. It's a fun thing to do. Find a subject that you like, you're interested and start to research about it and just you know and start to get you no know, find inspiration and that's you no know, by the way you're going to have a body of work you know yeah 
maybe it's not for everybody to like it, but you like it because you use your interest. That's something that you're, you know, you're passionate about it. I think that's such an important thing to remind folks, Sibeli, that you're coming into each project with uh, more emphasis on inspiration than materials. Uh, because it seems like you personally in your practice, you find what you can't look away from and you keep returning to it and the materials meet you where you are with your ideas. Yeah, perhaps. I, know. I think the, the, for me, this is like, all this, my, my artwork, I was like, I have to be challenged, feel a little uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the, in this project is learning watercolor because it's watercolor it is a difficult medium to work but allow myself to just play with it and be happy um you know so i like the medium but it's definitely the inspiration come came first comes first to me and after that i draw that which which, which medium is gonna fit more my project or my ideas or you know what i want to say you know in so our last now this guy's done i think yeah. i was gonna say in our last five minutes do you want to tell us a little bit more about the inspiration for the piece behind you and how you came to using just one pigment to create such a large watercolor color mural yeah it's the same pigment it's the carmine you know uh so this guy um is um so one of the things that i love it is the images from star wars I'm a big Star Wars fan. So this actually is inspired by some images from Star Wars. And I like the, you no, know, so it was supposed to be a spaceship coming here that became uh, uh, a bee, uh, so how can I, you no, know, so it's full of bees. And I, I started to, very, I'm very interested in, in, in bee. I wanna be a keep, beekeeping. I told my husband three years, we're gonna have bees at home. <laughs> you know, and so, so the, so the bees are trying to save the planet, you know, <laughs> through all the spaceships. So the bees are you know, attacking the spaceships that are coming to take the planets. Uh, but it's, it's like the images, you know, visually is, uh, is after some of the Star Wars photographs that I found online. Amazing. Again, such a, a, a difference of subjects coming together in a way that is so specific to you. Um, Creative Center artist in residence Sibeli Vieira, we would like to thank you so much for your time in walking us through the basics of monochromatic watercolor painting. Uh, we can't tell you how much we appreciate it and we hope that everyone who is viewing this at home will connect with us on the Creative Center social media platforms and by emailing info at thecreativecenter.org to let us know if you experiment with some of Sibeli's techniques for monochromatic watercolor. Thank you so much, Sibeli, coming to us live. If you want to know more, more about my work, you also can visit me at my website, sibeliviera.com. Uh, you can see more. We're going to have a show on the Tardigrade Wars and its allies very soon in Queens, probably in December. I hope. Very cool. Thank you so much, Sibeli. We'll speak with you very soon. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.